What's going on, guys? Mr. Arfetri here, Amazon a seller from beautiful San Diego. In today's episode, we have Christina here with us. Um, we have been trying to go live here on Facebook for probably about 45 minutes right now. We've tried Skype, Facebook, we've tried different things, but um, finally, uh, Zoom has done it for us. So this is a recording. Um, you guys are seeing us after the fact because we couldn't come live. So um, in today's video, we'll be talking about um, Amazon FBA. If you guys are beginner sellers wanting to start selling on Amazon in 2019, what are some things that you should watch out for? What are some things that you can um, you know, definitely start with? And also, we want to go into in depth a little bit about um, selling on Amazon for those that have been in the platform for some time, you know, talk a little bit about PPC, um, how to get reviews and things like that. So, Christina, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me, and it's a pleasure to be on your uh, live videos. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I know, uh, sorry about the inconvenience today. We've been trying to uh, do this for, for a while now, and I know last time we were live on the phone, you know, people almost couldn't hear what we were talking about. So it's awesome to finally have you on screen here. So why don't you, um, you know, take it back to um, last time when we were talking about, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about your brand and what do you do and things like that? Uh, there's somebody else here with us, right? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so. Um, I started private brand uh, around eight years ago before I was doing um, third party reselling. It's online arbitrage, uh, wholesale, and uh, a little bit of drop shipping. But we all eventually come to the fact that private label is uh, the best strategy. Uh, and uh, that is the thing that everybody who's selling on Amazon. Uh, should strive to do and um, that works a hundred percent and I only see the future of selling on Amazon uh, in private uh, label so uh, I opened uh, my private label uh, in a very specific niche this is uh, the uh, medical hoisery compression hoisery uh, for women for uh, athletes uh, people who are suffering uh, from veins disorders uh, DVT syndromes um, and uh, edema and many many other symptoms uh, and uh, that was the only way for me to uh, set myself on Amazon and uh, I went through many difficulties uh, uh, we've been doing it uh, first we've been wholesaling it for so other people have been selling for us then we tried uh, when it was on a uh, vendor express so uh, we've been um, Amazon vendors for some time but we all came to the idea that uh, uh, we should do it by ourselves uh, we 99% uh, FBA and we're still shipping, uh, um, we're still, still merchant fulfilling some orders, but uh, we're doing an FBA uh, like 100% of, uh, of all the orders. We're striving to do that. And um, as I said, we're right now in the process of integrating our brand into the European marketplaces. We already established our storefront in Canada and we've seen great result. And uh, I'm hoping for developing it and uh, trying to get as much uh, as much sales as possible on all of those marketplaces. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think uh, one of the uh, the most important things that uh, many sellers um, going into, especially into private label, don't really see the potential is that it's not just the U.S. market that you can sell in. You know, and I always tell uh, many of uh, beginners, you know, sellers is that you can always start with the U.S. market just because it's the the largest, it's got the highest demand. Um, but then once your product is up and running, you can always branch out into other marketplaces you know um and, and that was a great point that you brought up now in your opinion what are some of the let's say if the u.s market was number one what would you say would be the next two or three options um of your own uh, preferences of the marketplaces uh of course 
everybody has to do uh, Amazon UK because uh, it gives us a huge opportunity that is called pan-European system. Uh, pan-European system is uh, the system where you send in uh, your FBA uh, products uh, to UK to an address. It could be LTL, right, uh, wherever. And they themselves, they distribute your products um, uh, for all five European marketplaces. So you don't ship directly to Germany or to, to France or to Spain. The pan-European system uh, does that for you. It's getting a little bit difficult, uh, as I already told in our last uh, conversation, because right now, as for example, with the Germany, we are required to register, to register for the VAT and to uh, pay the amounts of money we haven't been even <laughs> thinking about but again it's all doable and if you see the future of your business and if you want to develop your brand you have to invest some money and uh, some of your time into that and uh, see how it goes absolutely absolutely and you know a uh, good point that you brought up about the uh the vet you know i i know that's something that i i've had many beginner uh sellers or many sellers that are trying to, I guess, go into the uh, European market, into the UK market and, and um, uh, German market, you know, they have been um, kind of stuck on how to apply, um, you know, how to go about it and stuff like that. So have you guys already gone through that process or is that something that you guys are going to go into um, just now? With the Germany, everybody is going into that right now. It's like 99% of sellers. So my friend, she just got her VAT. She registered way earlier than me after that first email from Amazon. I think that was, um, if I'm not mistaken, around uh, 20th December. So it took her around two months to get the VAT. Wow. But again, there are some other companies with whom you can do it faster or easier. Uh, UK VAT is easy. It's just two, three days and you get it and it is, it's free. With Germany, it's not that fun. According to what they expect us to do, they expect us to register VAT in all the European countries and pay taxes and be... Uh, be responsible for the taxes out there but you you know this is a difficult story the same story as um, with the MBA in the USA you need a special program to see where your nexus is and pay the taxes according to your nexus so this is the thing that is a little bit tricky and Amazon does not give us that information like you, right. you've got to pull it up so we have to turn on tax jar and this and that the same thing with the European marketplaces okay so it's only Germany right now who send us them email saying you know guys if you know if you're not going to register for what we're going to suspend your account and you're going to go through the whole process of reinstating it and proving and doing things like that and uh, uh, what i've heard uh, but as far as i know right now no one got suspended for not having that as, as of now so right. we'll see. anyway they they saying that it should be hundred thousand threshold it's even written there but still there is no clear answer and as far as i know i'm reading european uh, amazon forum uh no one has been suspended yet so we'll see okay right. now um i know we touched a little bit about uh that for just a little bit uh for those that are watching that um don't know what that is can you explain just briefly what it exactly is <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into that terminology and I might be wrong, but um, uh, with whom, what we can compare it. So probably this is like the franchise tax board right. um, in Europe and you pay according uh, to the same. So they have uh, two things, either they pay, uh, quarterly, they have to be paid quarterly and there is a special system how you calculate that and you pay it or head or you pay it uh, 
at the same time. So I'm not the professional in that. And uh, all of the tax questions, uh, I think you have to consult a specialist who is doing that because even on the YouTube and on the Facebook and whoever we're talking to, you cannot solely rely on their opinion and on their way how to do your taxes because this is your responsibility. This is something concerning the law and you have to be 100% sure that you're doing the right thing. Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, you know, with you on that. Um, so I know we, uh, we really wanted to discuss in this video um, about, um, you know, PPC and reviews and things like that. So why don't we kind of shift gears a little bit from all this tax technical stuff and uh, go to the fun stuff that um, everyone wants to know about, right? So, in your opinion, what is, I guess, let me, let me ask you this. So if let's say you um, had, to, you did not have your brand right now when you were a beginner seller, but you know what you know today, how would you launch a product on Amazon? You know, do you like you guys, and you don't have to, you know, say exactly, you don't kind of, if you don't want to share your, um, your uh, strategy, you don't have to, but um, in your opinion, you know, um, and in your knowledge, do you guys do like, I know some people do giveaways, some people do PPC. Some people do a little bit of each, or do you do other things? Um, you know, once again, you don't have to share your exact strategy, but anything would help. So uh, I can, sh like, basically, um, everybody has thousands of strategies, and right. it's uh, so difficult to pick uh, exactly the one that works for you. But um, by the book, they say you have to run, out a program fast, out a campaign fast, and pick up what brings you money. Right. So you can run uh, the program, you can call it catch all, uh -huh. and uh, just see, don't touch it for seven days, or don't touch it for 10 days, I assume they, they're doing that, and um, after that, you get the most uh, keywords that bring you money, that bring you traffic and that bring in you sales. Again, this is tricky questions because this is tricky question because for some products, uh, outer campaign should be a must 100% of time. Even though you get uh, this product, um, these keywords that are working for you, putting them into the manual, putting them into the exact and start bidding on them aggressively and then lowering the amount. This is the strategy, what they call by the book. But in some niches, you have to have outer campaign that brings you uh, constant traffic because the products are changing, the new stuff is changing. It's like you have to see what's going on because even I have the product that I've been selling for eight, for 10 years. Right. And every time I'm getting surprised because I keep getting new keywords and I keep getting the traffic where I couldn't believe that it could come from. Like, for example, you are um, selling the product for pregnancy. And after that, the keywords that's bringing you, it's postpartum or breastfeeding or something. So it's like the process after the process. You can't really bid on that and get the traffic out there. But according to the uh, outer campaign, you do because people are, are buying that. They're preparing, but the, this is the stage right now. That's why outer campaign, to my opinion, is a must. Uh, in the niches that are constantly developing and new products are... Um, uh, inventing and new products are popping up on the market. Um, what comes to the manual campaign? Manual campaign is tricky again as you have two ways. You have to be either super aggressive and start with the crazy bidding but as I said you have to be prepared for that uh, financially it's all our financial planning because if this niche that you are working uh, on you coming on it's like super hot selling and there are your potential competitors are thousand plus reviews you have to have a good amount of market to do the marketing for your product in the right way so in that uh, situation it's always, I would suggest, after the extracting the uh, best keywords, you do exact uh, manual. Uh, you see uh, 
the good advice would be to do dynamic bids up and down, but you see at least 20% to 30% because while playing it that aggressively, your bid could come up to $15. I've seen that and yeah, this is painful, but this is how it is in the, in the, in the uh, products that are in high demand, selling like, uh, I don't know, 50, 100 a minute or so. <laughs> so... This is, this is what it is. It's uh, $15, $20 per bit, and I've seen that. So be careful with the dynamic bits up and down. Um, maybe you can do higher initial bit, like, uh, but then you'll do bits down, only automatic bits down. Right. But by the book. So you run, catch all outer campaign, PPC, get the um, keywords that bring in you sales, uh, put them on the exact uh, with as high um, uh, per, be, uh, per click bit you can do and then start lowering it and see where they stop. That means that your com competition does not allow you to work any lower. So this is where you start. So basically, this is the beginning. This is where you start in your PPC and where you get in the most of the... Uh, most of the, the, the ideas for your market and how to market that. And, but again, uh, start your PPC only after you have decent amount of the reviews. If you don't have any reviews, believe me, you're wasting your money. At least, I don't know, if your competition has 100 or so, just get at least, I don't know, 410. If competition is 1,000, don't start it before you have at least like 20, 30. They, they used to say that it should be at least 20 reviews, but I started some products with uh, two or three reviews and they were still good. Right. So just uh, you, you can do that and uh, see how that works. Absolutely. Now, do you, um, do you use giveaways for launching your products at all or no? No, I don't use giveaways. Uh, launching your products, I wouldn't believe anyone who would say they're launching the products 100% white hat techniques. That does not exist anymore. I, I, I don't believe that, honestly, <laughs> because this is uh, something that uh, it's possible, but it will take, I don't know, increases the time for the launch from, let's say, two months to six months, <laughs> something like that. You have to see the growth and you have to see the turnaround, especially when you are uh, invested some money into your product. You cannot uh, allow it to sit in the warehouse and wait for the traffic to come get it or for the interest to pop up in the product. So, uh, I forget what was the question. <laughs> we were talking about giveaways. <laughs> oh, with the giveaways. No, no giveaways. It does not work for me. Um, best, uh, so we do in Whitehead Techniques. So this is um, uh, early reviewer program. Uh -huh. This is for sure. As soon as the product arrives, you do early review of product. They say the first months, the first 30 to 50 days, it's like the honeymoon for the product. Right. So Amazon is helping it a little bit. Right. You can't really see this help, but they say they do. So You know, funny thing is actually I talk about that a lot and I say two weeks. Um, two weeks. And I'll, you know, and I don't know what it is. And, you know, I, it's happened where I've had products get into FBA and sit for like a month before I launch them. And I feel like it's di more difficult to launch then. But then I've had products where they get in right away and I launch them right away and they just take off. Like they just yeah. literally take off. And I don't know, once it like, and I thought I was crazy, but I'm glad that I'm not the only one that thinks that, you know, <laughs> I'm glad that you also think the same thing. Um, yeah, this, this, this is again, this is something by the book. So it, 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 it's everywhere. Everybody's talking like that. Again, uh, what you can do while well, just started to launch that. Uh, so early reviewer, then of course you have to go and ask the people, find the ways to get these reviewers. Right. But be as careful as possible because I think that there is another cleanup of the reviews coming. There was one uh, in um, uh, spring and then it was in autumn. Now it's spring, so we're going to have the cleanup of the reviews. Be careful because this is just the time if you're launching right now. Be careful because if they will ban the product 
all the reviews, that is way difficult to restart it. Wow. And wow. you have the huge inventory in the warehouse. If you are restarting, you probably will need to get them back and do something with them. So um, the correct ratio, I would say it's one, when you begin, in, it's a 1 to 15 to 20. So if you... So one review per 20 sales, so... About 5% or so? I, I would say that would be careful. That right. would be, that would be correct enough when you just launching, when the product is just like, because I don't know how the, how the system works. They're very sensitive uh, in the beginning of the process of launching. So with the aggressive people, they're already putting the red flags. One red flag, two red flags, you're gone, that's it. Right. And we invested so much money um, into the review groups, into the people who is buying and giving the seed. This is just, uh, yeah, it's painful. <laughs> so right. we can absolutely, I'm hundred percent, um, you know, on that with you. And and as you said earlier, um, especially in kind of the um, the niche like that I that I look into, you know, you don't need that many reviews to get started, at least in the beginning, like as you said. I've had a lot of times where, you know, I'll have some uh, beginner sellers and they'll say, Hey, I've, you know, I've spent like this X amount of dollars on my PPC campaign and it, I just haven't been generating any sales. And I go into their listing and they've got, you know, zero, um, uh, zero reviews. And I'm like, you literally just wasted money, you know, like reviews, maybe, you know, like back in the day, maybe when I first got started back in 2015, 2016, um, reviews used to help, um, uh, ranking right right now I don't think reviews help ranking as much as especially after Amazon figured out that there are ways to getting reviews but reviews are more like a credibility you know like when you as a, a purchaser and I always say that you know like you as a buyer you're gonna go to Amazon you're gonna search for something if you're gonna see a listing with 15 reviews and one listing with no reviews which one are you gonna go for you know Yes, and what I want, I'm sorry for interrupting, and what I want to add right now and to what I think I want to share with you and with everybody who's been watching that, now Amazon, uh, I got some inside information that they're changing the ways to the reviews. In a few months, we will see uh, the hit for the products that have as many videos as possible. So you have, we have a few months, we have to, uh, all of the products we have, get the friends, get some professional studios or whatever, do some some lifestyle videos of your product, the way they are doing it in Instagram or Facebook. We need to have as many videos we can because what they're saying right now, uh, Amazon start to realize that at least 50% reviews on the marketplace are fake. Right. So they need to see the reviews, the product in real life. If it's closing, how it looks in the video, how, how, how the material feels, how it... Um, for example, if it's uh, some kitchen appliances or something, how it works, the sound uh, and everything. So uh, this is uh, the hint for everybody who is launching their products now, right now. If you have the way to do the short, small videos and uploading them, this is the videos that are underneath the listing. If right. you, have, uh, if you have brand register, of course, do enchant uh, brand content and put this video, uh, invest some money and get them on. Uh, the main product description that would be like giving you 100 points uh, way up uh, amongst your competitors so the videos are something that i want everybody to look at right now and um start working on them because we're moving uh, to the video content onto the amazon or shortly and the reviews will not be as valuable uh, as real uh Mm, life stories of the product, uh, real uh, videos of their usage. Right. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned a little bit about, um, you know, about uh, uh, brand registry and things like that. What do you, th what do you personally think about brand registry? Um, you know, does it really help uh, listings? Uh, um, should beginner sellers start with registering their brand first and then launching products? Um, you know, what is your take on the subject? So, uh, like, this is very clear answer. If you're not playing the games and Amazon is your full-time business and you invest in your time and your money uh, to get... Um, 
to, to set up the brand, to set up the business that eventually you can sell, um, you can uh, give to your children or something. You have to invest your time, do the company, do the LLC, go to USPTO, uh, trade, do the trademark. Uh, this cost, I don't know what LLC, $800, around $1,000, USPTO around $600, $700, and that's it. Yes, with USPTO, for, to trademark uh, your product, it might take up to one year. Uh, but again, with the right approach, it's all easy and it's all doable. And um, why it's a must, you have to have bread registry on Amazon first. Um, you're cutting off all the hijackers that come into your listing. For example, um, 2015, 2016, um, when they started, what was the what's popular? Garlic press. Let's say everybody right. led to garlic press. So one listing from China for garlic press, it was like 100 other sellers selling the same product. Uh -huh. So the best way to do, um, to save your night's sleep, and um, get protection for your brand, for your product, and uh, I don't know, protect uh, your selling, even, even selling privileges is to do the brand registry because you're avoiding hijackers, you're avoiding crazy people who can do infringement claims on your product, and uh, that will guarantee you, at least guarantee you a good night's sleep. But this is a must. Again, if you just launch in the product and this is something small, like, I don't know, just a cup, and you don't know how it sells, of course you're not going to go and uh, start investing your, uh, your time and money into uh, the brand registry. But if you've been on the market for at least, I don't know, six months, and you see the future of this product, you see the future of your brand, and what you want to develop that brand and um, invest some more time and money into um, doing the right thing, you should do that because um, this is not something uh, difficult. It's right. easy to do. You don't, you don't, in most cases, you don't even uh, need a lawyer. Um, so you can do all by yourself, even through the legal Zoom. I think you can do everything, uh, forming the LLC and uh, applying for the uh, trademark. Absolutely. Well, uh, Christina, it's been, honestly, it's been an honor having you here. Every time we come live, I know you share massive, 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 uh, you know, value. Um, you know, for anyone that's watching, um, I mean, look, Christina has been in the market for a while. And as she said, you know, a lot of the things I know that, and that's the problem is that, you know, people come up to us sometimes and they say, hey, I have $200, I have $500, I want to make thousands of dollars a month, you know? I have the, the great answer for that. Like, uh, I'm sorry, you wanted me to go, <laughs> I can go. But whatever, whatever the amount of money you have, you can always do something. Uh, with the right planning and with the right approach, you can start the business on Amazon. No one is inventing the bicycles. You go to the niche you like, as I already said in the previous video, you go into something you like. Girls like fashion, like fashion accessories. Boys like cars and uh, details and, uh, I don't know, knives, whatever. Go into something that you like. Start with the something you small. No one invents the bicycle. So you look at the niche, what uh, your potential competitors are. Analyze their product. Read their reviews. Read negative reviews. Come up with the idea. Start searching for your products. Uh, there is two ways. First, uh, there are many um, programs. Uh, it's um, Import Genius. It is... Um, port examiner where you can actually look what the competitors bring in and from where that will give you the idea where they're looking for that right now in few weeks i'm going to china canton fair this is the greatest um, china exhibition of new products you can always find something to sell los angeles guangzhou it's 350 400 dollars round trip it's easy to go and everybody could go see it if there is no opportunity go directly to china you can start with the alibaba import from china made in china uh global sources there are many uh platforms where you can start searching for a start with something small 
and see how it goes. It might be not, you might not like it at all to just to sell it on Amazon. See, see this game. It's like in the poker, it's the casino. You either like it, you, you get this um, feeling, or it's not, it, it's completely not yours. You want eight to five for a job, that, that's it. Absolutely. No, definitely. I mean, look, the potential is definitely there. I know a lot of times people say, well, Amazon is now, you know, competitive or it's now, uh, you know, uh, uh, saturated. And I always say, you know, sure, it is. It is a lot more saturated than it was a few years ago, but there are also a lot more sellers on Amazon today. I mean, a lot more buyers on Amazon today. You know, there's more people directing their, their traffic and instead of going to, to the store. Now, a lot of people shop on Amazon, you know, so and it's the, the most trusted uh, online platform there is. So if you're not part of it, you're definitely missing out. As you said, you don't want to just stay working yeah. until nine to five. That's cool. You know, if that's what you want, that's cool. But if you're really trying to grow and start an online business, do something on your own terms, um, you know, do something new, do something different. You know, Amazon is definitely the place to go. Um, you know, once again, guys, uh, Bashar get to hear Amazon to be a seller from beautiful San Diego. Christina, really awesome and honor having you here. Um, you know, it's always great having you here. We'll probably be doing a lot more of those. Um, guys, anyone that's watching us every day, uh, uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, you know, I'll come live to you with an entrepreneur who has a product or service that can help you guys uh, impact, you know, make an impact in your life. So if there's an entrepreneur you guys want me to bring on next, uh, comment their name in the comment section below. Um, also, this is, as you guys all know, this is a recording. So, uh, you know, we tried going live, but it didn't work out. Uh, hopefully next time we do, we'll be able to go, um, go live. Um, Christina, once again, really glad having you here. Um, really appreciate your time. Um, no happy problem. I am happy to be there and to wherever you need me. If there will be more interest, I can show up once a week with you and we can catch up with some things. That'd be awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time and um, have yourself a great day. Thanks, Mike.